Hello, my name is John, and in this Far From Saturn Tutoring video, I'm going to be showing you guys the concepts behind Vesper theory, hybridization, and then applying those concepts to drawing out molecules with 3D orbitals. So let's get right into it. Vesper stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion, and you can use Vesper to draw out um, and predict how to draw the molecules based on electron repulsion. So I have this chart written out here. Um, that links hybridization to Vesper, which is an electronic geometry way to visualize the um, atoms in a molecule. So there are three um, hybridization uh, characterizations that you're going to be using in organic chemistry. You can, of course, of course, go higher, but these three, SP, SP2, and SP3, are the primary hybridization schemes you'll be using. So SP is going to correlate with the linear Vesper um, geometry, SP2 is going to be with trigonal planar, and SP3 is going to correlate with tetrahedral, okay? Now to determine these, you're going to be using what we call Vesper pairs, okay? Now Vesper pairs, there are two types of Vesper pairs. There are either sigma bonds or localized non-binding electrons. So it, you use those to determine your hybridization and therefore your Vesper geometry. So I have an example written out here, this molecule, and I have a table which we're going to use to write out the hybridization for each atom. And then we're going to go into another example of how to also find the best for pairs and then therefore make the 3D orbital drawing. Okay? So let's get right into it. Um, of course, best for pairs, like I said before, are either non-binding electrons that are localized or they're sigma bonds. So if we start with our first carbon here, we see that there are three sigma bonds and there's no localized non-binding electrons. So since there are three best for pairs, that correlates to an sp2 hybridization. So carbon one is going to have an sp2 hybridization. This middle carbon here, we're going to call it carbon two, it, it has two sigma bonds, okay? Remember that in a double bond, one of those bonds is actually a pi bond, so it has two sigma bonds. Therefore, two sigma bonds correlates to two Vesper pairs, and therefore it's an sp hybridization, okay? So carbon two is sp. This third carbon here, it also is part of this double bond, therefore one sigma bond is part of a Vesper pair there, and then it has two other sigma bonds and no localized non-binding electrons. So again, like carbon-1 over here, this is sp2. Now we get to this nitrogen. Nitrogen has three sigma bonds, but it also has a lone pair here. So we need to realize, is this delocalized or localized uh, non-binding electron? Well, if you, real, if you remember from the resonance video, you'll see that there's a common theme here, that these electrons can be moved down, right, to make a double bond, and these pi electrons can move up to the carbon. Okay, so these non-binding electrons are delocalized, and they don't factor into a Vesper pair. So since they are delocalized, they do not, and there's only three sigma bonds that are taken into account into what the Vesper pairs are. So, like the other two carbons, this nitrogen is also sp2. Now we get onto this oxygen. This oxygen has two non-binding electrons, so we need to characterize them. Are they both delocalized, or are they both vocalized? Well, one of them, we can move just like we did with the nitrogen, and do that same common theme, okay? This is the theme where you move delocalized electrons and move another source, the pi bond, up. So one of these pairs of non-binding electrons are delocalized, but we can't move both of them. If we did that, we couldn't, there is no other source of pi electrons to move. So therefore, one of them is delocalized and one of them are localized. And that will give us one best, one best pair being the localized non-binding electrons, and then two, three, because there are two sigma bonds. So then again, this oxygen is also sp2. Now we get to our last carbon, this uh, methyl hanging off here. This carbon is bonded to the oxygen and then bonded to three hydrogens. So it has four sigma bonds, therefore four pairs, and this is our sp3 hybridization. So that is the way to characterize um, atoms in a molecule based on Vesper pairs. And if you find out what Vesper pairs are, you know what the hybridization is, and therefore what the Vesper or electronic geometry is. And just for review, of course, Vesper pairs are either sigma bonds or localized non-binding electrons, okay? So now, in this uh, table here, we have the observable geometry. And non-binding electrons can influence the observable geometry. So depending on how many sigma bonds you have, you can either um, go to different geometries based on your hybridization. So, like in this carbon here, if this was sp3, it has four sigma bonds, and therefore its observable geometry is also tetrahedral. Same with the electronic. If there was a non-binding electron somewhere, it would decrease that. It would decrease a sigma bond down to three sigma bonds, and therefore it would be trigonal pyramidal. Okay. So this table here is very important. You can realize that the observable geometry changes based on how many sigma bonds there are. So I have written out steps here um, to 
use and to find the way you draw out the three orbital pictures of a molecule. So we have an example here, and we're going to go through the steps of how to draw this out 3D, okay? So our first step is to count the vesper pairs. And again, vesper pairs, I have written up there, are either localized, non-binding electrons, or they are sigma bonds. So we're going to do that for all the atoms here that will have shapes. So our first carbon here, it has three sigma bonds, therefore it has three vesper pairs, and that correlates to an sp2 hybridization. So we'll write out sp2. Same with this carbon here, also has three sigma bonds, no non-bonding um, electrons that are localized. Our oxygen has one pair okay, of non-bonding localized electrons. The other pair are delocalized because I can move them in and then move this double bond up. Okay, common resonance theme here. So again, this oxygen, sp2. And then this carbon bonded to four things. It has four sigma bonds, so four vesper pairs, so sp3. So we've, we've done the first step. We've counted the vesper pairs we have. Therefore, we have the hybridization, sp2, 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 and sp3. So the next step for drawing out the 3D orbitals is to essentially draw them out and draw out the hybrid bonds based on these hybridizations. So this carbon is sp2, which means that it's going to be planar. The bonds are going to all be uh, relative to each other by 120 degrees. So if I draw out the carbon, if I draw it out like this, it's planar. These bonds are roughly 120 degrees. That's what sp2 hybridization gives you, okay? So there's my hydrogens. This carbon is going to be bonded to the other carbon, which is also sp2. So I'm going to draw these bonds roughly 120 degrees apart. Okay, you'll notice they're about 120. I'm not going to worry about this double bond yet because those are, that's the pi electrons. That's the um, step three here. I'm going to go next into my oxygen, which is also sp2. So I need to draw these bonds 120 degrees um, apart from each other. So I'll do that. One of these bonds is going to be taken up by the hydrogen. Now this one is empty. Um, we have two sets of non-binding electrons. We can fill one of these with one of the sets, and then the other non-binding electrons, because they're delocalized, they're going to be in that pi orbital. So we're going to take that into account, step three here. Lastly, we're going to draw our carbon, our last carbon, and this is an sp3. So we need to draw this out um, tetrahedral style, which means that there's going to be a bond coming out of the board and into the board, okay? So the way to draw this out is to draw one of them down, one of them wedged, and one of them dashed, okay? And these bond lengths are going to be relative to each other by about 109.5 degrees, okay? So one of them will be the H, another H here, and our last one, uh, also an H. But the dash, of course, means into the board. The wedge means coming out of the board. So that's a way to visualize that 3D. Now we need to put in our P orbitals, okay? We have a double bond here, and we also need to put in P orbitals where the oxygen is to take into account that other pair of electrons, okay? So we're just going to draw them um, with depth. Right? The p orbitals are going to be coming in and out of the board, and we're going to draw the same thing for the second carbon here. Okay? So now that we have our p orbitals drawn, we link them together to form the double bond. Okay? And it's as simple as that. This indicates that it's a double bond happening between those pi electrons. We're going to do the same thing for the oxygen here. We're going to draw the p orbitals depth-wise like this. Okay? We have one pair of uh, electrons we need to take into account and that's going to be in one of these orbitals. Okay? You're not going to draw one in one orbital and the other in the other orbital. That's not how it works. You have to put both pair in the same orbital. Okay? And our fourth step is what we've been doing all along. We've been um, representing our Lewis structure. Let's make sure we take and uh, step back and review that this is actually the structure we drew. Okay? So we have our sp2 carbon here, our sp2 carbon there. They're laid together by a double bond indicated by the pi orbitals and the um, dash lines there. We have our tetrahedral carbon, sp3, indicated by the 3D structure. We have a wedge coming out, dash going in. And lastly, our sp2 oxygen, we can indicate, because it has two sets of electrons, that one of them can come off of the bond here, and the other one is in the p orbitals. Okay? So best repair is very important. This links together resonance, and it is important for um, realizing that resonance can influence the geometry because of the basis of the movement of electrons. Okay? Thank you for tuning in.